Welcome back to 4F Beauty. Where will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what you will know from the thumbnail and the title and if you've read it the description box, I finally caved and I finally purchased something from Natasha Denona. It's the Mini Tropic palette. What did I think of it? How well did it perform? If I'd borrowed a friend's one, would I have bought one for myself? Do I recommend you to buy one? All of these burning questions and many more will be answered if you sit back with a drink and a snack and enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. You will have seen in the intro that I caved. <clears throat> I've always said I'm not going to buy Natasha Denona. It's too bloody expensive. No point. The only thing I was interested in, really, was the colourful row from the Tropic palette and the Safari palette. But I've, I've assuaged my need for the Safari palette basically with that one <clears throat> and the Melt Smoke Sessions and all the other green palettes that I've <laughs> been buying in the last few months. Um, but then she released the mini of the Pretty Row from the Tropic palette. And it was 25 bucks. Apparently it was Sephora exclusive and also on her website obviously. There they all are, look, beautiful. I have swatched them off to get up on screen somewhere while I'm talking to you. Um, now, if I'm looking at buying Natasha Denona, I normally go to Cult Beauty because they have the best prices. So um, I tweeted them, or I tweeted them. What is it? Do you Twitter or do you tweet? I, I don't know. I'm too old for this nonsense. It's too hot. <sighs> but I couldn't resist playing with this palette. Um, I tweeted at them saying, are you getting the Natasha Denona mini palette? because I thought, it's limited edition. If it doesn't come to the UK, I am going to be kicking myself for not buying this. But likewise, I didn't want to buy it and then pay a fortune in delivery, because obviously I'd have to buy it from her site, because Sephora UK no longer ships, uh, Sephora US no longer ships to the UK. We don't have a Sephora in the UK. Um, if, you, if we try to get onto the Sephora US site, it automatically re-diverts us to the French site, which doesn't get the releases at the same time as the America one, and doesn't get all of the releases either. So I thought, if Cult Beauty are going to get it, I'll wait, because obviously I didn't know whether I was going to get hit with import charges and all kinds of things. I thought, I'll wait, because they've got the Camel palette, which is the same size, and it was 41 quid, and I'm like... Yeah, okay, I probably will, you know, treat myself, have a splurge. Because I've been suffering recently, pain-wise, and whenever I suffer, I usually end up buying myself something a little bit too expensive. The last time it was the Melt Smoke Sessions. <sighs> time before that, it was the Hourglass uh, Dim Light Powder. This time it was Natasha Denona. So I tweeted them saying, are you, are you getting it? Don't need to know when, just need to know whether you're getting it or not. And the reply was, oh, all of our new releases are secret. You're going to have to subscribe to the newsletter to find out. Bitch, I am already subscribed. You haven't told me. So I'm just like, oh, do you know what? I can't be dealing with that attitude. I'm going to buy it from Natasha Denona, even if it costs me more. So, 25 bucks for this. She had two shipping options. 15 bucks for three to five days and 20 bucks for two to three and I thought balls I might as well pay the extra five bucks so this cost me 45 bucks 
which in UK prices is 37. So I'm like, oh, that's four quid cheaper than it would have been in uh, Colt Beauty. So providing I don't get hit with it, customs charges, I'll have actually saved money. I don't know how, but I didn't get hit with customs charges because this is about a quid over. Because um, normally you can spend about 23 bucks, 23 and a half bucks roughly. This is 25, goodness only knows how it snuck through, but I ain't complaining. So, after all that waffling, this is what I'm playing with today. It's, oh, it's barely bigger than a USB stick, really, but, you know, let's have some fun. Right, my channel is a teaching channel, and uh, partly because of my chronic pain, and partly because it is a teaching channel, uh, my blending etc is all done in real time and it's probably slower than a lot of you would do <clears throat> sorry silicon in case you're wondering um, if I'm going too slowly for you please just use the speed widget and speed me up I'm not going to be offended because let's face it I'm not going to know right let's get you zoomed in Face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed and I've actually, finally, this bloody poreless putty primer thing that Jeffree Star approved and then it hadn't been in stock in the UK health store for months, finally mm. came into stock. So I got the alert, I bought it, I told my mate about it. By the time she got online half an hour later, it was sold out. So I've tried that today to see if it will hold my foundation on my nose any better. Right. This is my uh, Royal & Langnickel Chic Pro Crease Brush. I might do different looks on each eye, actually. To try out everything in the palette. Right, so I'm going to dip into the lilac one, which is Xena. Oh, Xena Warrior Princess. And I'm just going to start by tapping this. The, um, the eyeshadow primer that I've used is the Crow and Pebble White Primer. Um, I do have a discount code with them, it's listed in my description box below um, it's actually one of the best primers I've ever used uh, I used to use either concealer or the MAC soft ochre paint pot but this is fantastic they, they do six different shades the, the deepest two being a really really deep chocolate brown and black so you're going to be able to find something that will work for your skin tone and for what you want to do um, but I just love this white one because you know I'm, I'm super pale anyway and this is just a really great way of making colours really punch right, so after I've tapped it all on to set the primer because I hadn't set the eyelid primer at all so I'm just tapping it on to, to set the primer I can then do some blending. So, how's your day been? Has it been a good one? There's not much kick up in the pan, which is good, but it does mean that obviously you don't pick up as much product on the brush. And you do have to dip back in a few more times. Right, in my mirror, this is not patchy. In my viewfinder, it is. I get that quite a lot though. And then I edit it, and it doesn't look patchy at all. And I'm just like, hmm, okay. But I promise you, in my mirror, this looks absolutely perfect. Hmm. I 
think I might use that as the base for both eyes and then do blue on one eye and green on the other. I think that's the way that I'm going to go with this. I mean, not being funny, 37 quid for this tiny amount of shadow is a ridiculous price to pay. But I've wanted to try her. I've, I didn't have her on my brands I wanted to try list. Because, to be quite frank, I didn't think she'd ever release something that was in my price range that would interest me. Because all the mini palettes that she brought out, like the Camel palette and the Cranberry palette, they just weren't grabbing me. I just, I said to one of my mates, if she'd just released that bottom row, the Tropic palette, I'd be quite happy. I'd buy that. And, uh, you know, I obviously put it out into the universe and she heard me. But, I've got to be honest... Don't, at the moment at least, okay I've only used the one shade, but at the moment I'm not really seeing anything spectacular to warrant the cost. Do you, do you know what I mean by that? It, it's just, it's not performing any better than um, my September Rose palette. Uh, the purple's in there, or the Blush Tribe palette, the purple's the Hasina 2, or the Affinity palette from um, Certify. Just cleaning this brush off on a um, clean washcloth. And I'm going to grab a slightly more tapered brush. This is still uh, the Chic Pro range from Royal and Langnickel, but this is the eyeshadow brush, and you can see it's a little bit more oval rather than being blown out. So I'm going to pick up, I'm actually going to have to use a shimmer through my crease because both the greens and the dark blue are shimmers. But as you know, that doesn't worry me. I'm, you know, I've done all shimmer looks before now. So I'm just going to run this through the crease in the windscreen wiper movement like so. Now obviously shimmers don't blend out as easily as mattes do because they're not intended to be blended out. But I have put some more pigment on and I am going to attempt to blend. This is laying down okay at the moment. I mean, you can use shimmers like a matte. If you use the right brush, what ends up happening is you sort of, as you blend, rather than packing the colour on like you would normally do with a shimmer, by blending, you almost blend the, the shimmer pigments away and you're left with the, the base colour underneath, which normally ends up either matte or a satin finish, which is what's happening here. Blended out okay. Blended well into the um, mat that we've got going on. Just going to run a bit of that on the outside edge of the eye. I'm already starting to go shiny on that blue. I don't know if you can see that. There you go, see? It's already starting to go shiny, so I'm going to end up with hard pan on it by the look. And that's just with a dry brush. So that's really annoying and frustrating given the price of this bloody palette. Well, that's blended out okay. I'm okay with that. Right, I'm going to clean this brush on the uh, clean washcloth again. Uh, that shade, by the way, was called Tiger Lily. How lovely. And I'm about to go into exotic. How the hell is green exotic? How oh, my eyes are exotic because they're green. Sorry. Having a bit of a Kenny Everett moment there. For those of you old enough to remember him. 
I still got a 7 inch vinyl copy of Snot Rap Rap by Cupid Stunt. You really have to be careful how you say that way. Okay, this green is actually really nice. <laughs> Having blasted it for its name, it's. Mm. That's actually quite a nice green. Um, don't pull your eye out like I just did then. I have to do that because I have super deep creasing here. Um, I was so excited to play with this. I didn't explain the difference between hooded light eyes and everything, did I? I will explain that just before I disappear off to do the foundation now. clean some of this pigment off of this brush because the, the, the green is way more pigmented than that blue was and I'm going to go back into the lilac and just use that to buff that edge out a little bit make the blend a little bit smoother I'm back into the exotic green. Yeah, you can see this, this green is way more pigmented than that blue. Way more pigmented. That green is really nice, actually. I'm still not sure it's worth 37 quid, which is obviously what it cost me. I mean, had I not had the ridiculous um, 20 bucks delivery charge, if it had just been 25 bucks, which would have worked out to about, I suppose, just under 19, no, 25 bucks would be about 21 quid, 22 quid. That would be far more acceptable. But, living in the UK, we always get stung with delivery. Always. And then, if we do get stuck with import charges, it's 20 bloody percent. And a handling fee of anything from 8 to 23 quid. Depending on who's handling it. Right, I will just quickly go over eye shapes now. When I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I don't have hooded lids. If your static lid completely covers your mobile lid right down to the lash line, then you have either a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now what I've got is deep set eyes or double lidded eyes. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If I cover the mobile lid this side and close my eye look how much lid folds back in it's not visible when my eyes open and now if I do the same on the static lid you can see basically all of that green tucks back away as you can see because when it's open you can only see the barest little sliver there so that is what a deep set eye is, it's not a hooded lid, but we do get the same issues with transference of shimmer onto our upper lid. Um, if we're cutting our crease we can't just follow the socket, we have to go up onto the lid. And even when we use glitter glues we end up with a bare patch, usually right through here. Now, if you have got hooded lids, you can still follow my tutorials. All you need to do, get a brush like this, with your eye open, just sketch yourself a new crease line. So you're creating a mobile lid on your static lid. And because I always use deeper colours through the crease, it'll give the illusion that that bit of the eye is further away and then it'll look as if you've got deep set eyes rather than hooded lids. Yes, it will reduce the space between your new crease and your brow, so just use slightly smaller brushes than I do and you'll be absolutely fine. Now I normally say that before I put uh, makeup on. So I apologise for getting so excited. Right. Now I'm going to go into the 
light blue, which is a matte, which is called Laguna. Now that makes me think of Laguna Beach, which makes me think of uh, Mario Brothers. I'm just looking down into a mirror here because obviously I can't close this eye because being blind in that one I wouldn't be able to see what on earth I was doing, but at least this way you can still see. So I'm just going to apply this. Well, that's got some pigment. Okay. I'm just going to apply this to the part of the lid that didn't have any colour on it yet. I've not cut the lid because I want to see how much opacity these have, whether they'll have enough to sort of cover the deeper shade that's through the crease. And that one, that one worked absolutely fine. But it is a matte, so I would have expected it to. Now, the last shade in here that I have not tried yet is Mint Frost. So, cleaning my brush off again, I should go into Mint Frost. Yeah, this is definitely going to get hard pan. It's going shiny the minute you put a brush in it. Don't expect that with this sort of price of shadows, Natasha. Right, I do have to pull my lid out for this bit, otherwise it all builds up in the crease. And then as I move my lid during the day, I get speckles falling down my cheek, which if you're going for the multicoloured freckle look, that's a really easy way to do it. But uh, not a look I was planning on, to be honest. Right, this is being applied dry. Put some. I'll try it wet. See if it makes any difference. Never put a wet brush into a um, pressed pigment. You can use anything to wet your brush. I'm using this fixing spray, which is vanilla and coconut at the moment. Mainly because it doesn't really do much to hold my makeup on during the day. So. I use it for this. I apply pigment to the brush, wet the brush, dry off the ferrule here so that you don't get any moisture going down, loosening the bristles. And I'm just going to see whether. Yeah, that does give it a more metallised, reflective finish when you apply it wet. That's really, really shiny. Let's just dry the brush off. Pick up a wee bit more of that pigment. Yeah, that's that's super reflective. I'm going to pause you now while I uh, put some foundation on etc and I'll be back to finish off this eye look. Now for you that's going to be an absolutely seamless transition and you will see me instantly. I however will see you the next time I press the record button. Hello, I had to do purple brows didn't I really? Just It would just be so wrong if I didn't. Um, for those of you who've been asking, it is a Revolution Pro pig pigment pomade in Royal Purple. Now, depending on what eye look you have with it, it can actually look quite pink. Because uh, a couple of times where people compliment me on my pink brows, and I'm thinking, but they're purple. Uh, but I've also got their blue pigment in shade Ocean Blue which um, I'll put the purple on and then I'll put the blue over the top um, and that gives you a far deeper purple so if you have got an eye look where you know you're using this and it's looking a bit too pink um, just chuck some of the, the blue on or if you've not got that just maybe put some blue eyeshadow powder through it just to deepen them up a little bit 
Right, going in with my flat top brush, I'm going to start off with the blue side. I'm going to go into that deep blue again. And I'm literally just going to get some on the end of the brush. And then I'm going to follow on from here, bring it underneath my lashes. About two thirds of the way along. And then because I've been struggling wearing eyeliner at the moment because my fibre has been really bad and my eyes have been running a lot with that and the hay fever, I load the brush up and then just sort of just stamp it on the end there like that. You see you get a slightly darker line just at the edge, just almost imperceptible and when you're back here. But if you look, it does it gives the same effect of elongating the eye out. Um, so that is a, a trick for you. Use the same deep shade that you've used through your crease to come under your eye and then just put a really dark I come close. Can you sort of remember how dark that is compared to the blended bit? Because it's literally just stamped on. But it does give you just that, that same subtle effect of pulling the eye out. Right. Do the same thing on the green side. I've cleaned the brush off and I'm going back in with the deep green. Bring that again about two thirds of the way along the bottom lid. And then load up the brush and stamp it on the outside. It's not as easy to see with a shimmer but it does still give you the same effect. Right, I'm going to go in with this uh, flat topped brush. This is actually the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen palette. I'm going to go in with this and I'm, to tie the eyes back together again I'm going to go back into that lilac that I used first time just to smudge that bottom lash line out a little bit just to just soften the harshness of that line if you like the line harsh you can leave it harsh or you can blend it out with its same colour so you could blend it with the green either the light green or the dark green uh, but because I'm wanting to pull the eye looks together and I use the lilac as the base for both of them, I thought it would be quite nice <clears throat> to smoke the bottom out with that lilac as well. Hmm. Right. Time to decide on a highlight. Um, I think actually, shall I go into one of my... Which one is that? No. Uh, that won't work with the blue. Right, I'm going to grab... more neutral colour because I mean, normally I would choose to do a blue a green this side and a blue this side but obviously I don't want the two to clash so I'm gonna grab because I haven't used this one very much yet this is the um, the Juvia's Place highlighter the Tribe Highlighter Volume 3 that my friend Kay sent me and it's like a champagne-y with a bit of a twist of um, like a hint of pinky lilac so I think it would pull in this bit nicely. This is literally a lip brush, I bought it from eBay about a decade ago but it's absolutely perfect for tucking up under the tail end of your brow. just to help lift that area. That's why I always leave about a you know three four mil gap between my brow and the colour. 
just because I really want that brow highlight to show. You can use a matte shade if you want, but I like my highlight, what can I say? I'm going to use this on the inner corners as well. Now you can just do the inner corners like this. Which is great. But what I've found suits my eye shape nicely is to bring it along under the tear duct and just sort of blend it at the start of the colour that I've run across the bottom of my eye. And that for me just really finishes the eye look off really nicely and opens the eyes up well. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time while I put this all over various parts of my, my face, do some mascara, do some lippy, do something with my hair, and I'll be back with my final first impression thoughts. You ready? Let's go. I am back. I am melting, but I am back. Right. Uh, Mascara was the Catrice Glamondale Waterproof Extra Volume, which uh, is the bang on dupe for Benefit Bad Girl Bang, but it's cheaper and it's waterproof. This rather glossy, lovely, tingly lip that I have on is one of the new ones from um, L'Oreal. It's their Colourish Shine Coconut Plump, this one. Um, I've also got um, an orange coloured one and I've got a pink one over there as well. These are actually really nice. They, they give just enough of a tingle that you feel like they could be plumping your lips. But it's a nice cooling effect, particularly in the summer. And I like this. They give just enough. It's almost like a lip gloss but in a stick format. So much easier to handle. Uh, and setting spray was, uh, I actually used my Milani Make It Dewy setting spray because I was feeling a bit powdery. So, Natasha Denona Mini Tropic Palette, what do I think? Um, I think it performed okay. Uh, do I think it's worth the high cost that you're paying for it? No, to be perfectly honest, um, for the price I paid for this, I could have got indie brand palettes, full sized indie brand palettes. I mean, the cost of this was, what, 37 And I think my Hasina 2 was 25 quid, and that's got pretty much all these colours in it and then some and it performs just as well if not better that that shimmery dark blue didn't that that's the only one that I was less than impressed with that shimmery dark blue okay you could say well it's a shimmer it's not designed to blend out but no but neither is the green one but that blended out absolutely fine over on this side but that blue really needed coaxing into A, getting onto my brush and then B, getting from my brush to my face. Um, if you really want to try Natasha's formula like I did for yourself, then I would definitely say grab one of her mini palettes, um, one of the cheapest ones that she does because at least then you're not stung too heavily in your in your pocket and you've got a Natasha Denona to compare to other. Uh, but to be perfectly honest, I could have achieved this look with the Hasina 2 palette. Um, I could have achieved this look with Affinity 1 and Affinity 2 from Certify. I could have achieved this look with the slush palette from September Rose so there's three UK indie brands that I could have recreated this with um, for considerably less than I paid for this I'm glad I've got it I'm glad I've tried it I'm glad I've got my curiosity out of the way will I buy any more 
No. No. Um, there was nothing spectacular about those colours. There was nothing ground-breakingly amazing about those colours. So, no. It's an okay palette. It's a nice enough palette. It performed well enough. Um, it would be great for travel in terms of, you know, you could, you could, ladies, we could almost sort of like shove it under our bra strap when we're going out for the night kind of thing. Um, I wouldn't advise that. You don't want to drop that out and have it smashed. Not the price you paid for it. But, you know, if you're, if you're going overnight to a mate's and you know you're going to need to do your makeup either for the evening or for the next day, then that's a good travel size palette. But then... So is this £5 Wet n Wild palette? So is this 12 bucks with delivery and everything here, they work out about 16 quid palette. They're all small, they'll all fit in your handbag nicely. Um, they all perform well. I'm glad I've tried it because I've wanted to try Natasha Denona for many, many years. Is this foundation the wrong shade? Has it oxidised on me? Oh, I don't know. Um, I'm glad I got it to get my curiosity out of the way, but having tried it, am I going to buy any more? Of course, if Natasha wants to put me on her PR list, I am quite happy to receive them and um, give you my honest reviews on them. But as always, they will always be honest reviews. I don't, I don't pad my reviews, I don't hold my thoughts back, because I never want you to buy something on my recommendation, which I wouldn't use myself. If I tell you a palette is good, if I give it a one thumbs up or a two thumbs up, then it means that it is going into my rotation and that I will be using it off camera when I'm not filming. Will I be using this off camera when I'm not filming? Probably not, to be honest. Um, I may use it when I, you know, we, we sometimes go up at the weekend to see our... <laughs> It's this tingling lipstick, it's just making me impossible to speak. Uh, you know, we sometimes pop up and see my brother-in-law, and then I have like a little mini makeup set with me. At the moment, it's got um, one of the little Super Shock shadows from um, Colourpop that I just whack across my socket. It's got a brow and a mascara and a clear lip salve and, and some powder and some concealer and, and that's kind of my mini makeup kit so I might end up putting this into that mini makeup kit because you know it's small enough it's light enough and you know, it performed okay but would I recommend you to buy it? Not really. If you, if you desperately want to try something from Natasha Denona Try and find someone else who's already got it. Try this. If not, then definitely buy one of the smaller palettes, one of the five pans, so that you're not too stung cost-wise. Right. On that rather disappointing but still colourful note, um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you want to watch some more films of mine. Uh, there are plenty to choose from. Uh, if you are one of my subscribers, please double check you are still subscribed and that your notification bell is rung. Uh, there is an issue where people are getting unsubscribed. I had three people last week say to me, you were still in my news feed, but then when I double checked when you said about it, I was actually unsubscribed from you and my numbers, it's, it's bizarre, I'll put a, a film up and instantly I'll lose between one and five subscribers, which then thankfully so far have sort of creeped back on again during the week, but it, it just seems like every time I put a film up, 
I'm losing subscribers and yet they come back and they say to me well, I was unsubscribed from you so I don't know what YouTube are doing right now um, you'll probably hear this from a lot of small creators to please please double check and if you are new and you have enjoyed the waffling of this half Welsh half Yorkshire slightly nutty bird and want to join the 4F family then feel free to click that subscribe button click that notification bell and choose all notifications because you know you can ring my bell ring my bell my bell okay that's quite enough it's getting far too hot clearly I need to go and do myself an iced coffee and uh, put my feet up and maybe nibble on a cheesy biscuit Right, on that note, all of the remains to be said, as ever, is your stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.